निश्चित रूप से अब ये मैन्युफैक्चरिंग भी शुरू होगी ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन की निर्मिति भी होगी इसके स्टेशन भी होंगे देश का इम्पोर्ट भी बचेगा और साथ सबसे बड़ी बात यह है कि इसके कारण एक नए रोजगार भी निर्माण होंगे नितिन गडकरी एक्नोलेज इंडिया फ्यूल इशूज एंड मैं ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन इज द सोल्यूशन टू इंडिया फ्यूल प्रॉब्लम हम अब हाइड्रोजन को एक्सपोर्ट करने वाले एनर्जी को एक्सपोर्ट करने वाली कंट्री बनेंगे और ये पर्यावरण पूरक है Hi everybody in March 2022 Nitin Gadkari sir surprised the entire nation as he arrived at the parliament in a hydrogen powered car and as soon as this happened we all saw how viral this went on twitter and guess what this was not just a gimmick but a clear indication to the people of India that hydrogen fuel is the future because it's not just the government Mr Mukesh Ambani is boldly investing into both blue and green hydrogen Adani Group is set to invest 70 billion dollars into renewable energy and aims to produce the cheapest hydrogen on earth and the Tatas are already looking to build hydrogen buses for India so the question is what is this green hydrogen all about how is it going to play out in comparison to the lithium and batteries that we already have and most importantly as investors what are the challenges and factors that you need to consider before you invest into green hydrogen related stocks This video is brought to you by Deser but more on this at the end of the video Chalo let's start from the basics and try to understand why exactly is India so aggressive about renewable energy In this case there are three specific reasons Number 1 we are extremely dependent on the Middle East for oil which makes us extremely vulnerable to oil shocks in case of geopolitical tensions Secondly the world leaders realized that climate change is real so india and 193 other nations signed something called the paris pact wherein india is aiming to cut down 50% of the greenhouse emissions by 2030 and lastly three of the most important industries in india and the world itself do not yet have a viable renewable energy substitute and these industries are steel transportation and chemical which means the existing modes of renewable energy production cannot run these industries profitably so whoever manages to crack this code of renewable energy will go on to become a net exporter of renewable energy eventually they will go on to command extraordinary power in the global politics and one of the most important instruments to achieve this is green hydrogen because it can produce an extraordinary amount of energy with literally zero emissions if this is very very clear to you let's try to understand what exactly is green hydrogen to put that straight hydrogen production happens in many ways and based on the method and the source of its production hydrogen is categorized into four major categories the first type is gray hydrogen which is produced by breaking down methane and coal by a process called steam methane reforming then we have blue hydrogen which is exactly like gray hydrogen but in this case 95% of the carbon by product is actually captured stored and reused then we have the third type which is turquoise hydrogen which is produced by a process called pyrolysis and then we have green hydrogen which is produced not using methane not using coal but renewable energy and the process to get this hydrogen is a process called electrolysis if you remember electrolysis was taught to us in 8th standard science so as you can see clearly green hydrogen as the name suggests is the cleanest form of hydrogen wherein there is no carbon by product at all Now the misconception that people have over here is that when we say hydrogen fuel most people think hydrogen is a source but in reality hydrogen is an energy carrier and not an energy source which means what if you look at the production of green hydrogen first there'll be a solar power plant that will actually produce electricity then this electricity is used to conduct electrolysis and as this current passes through water which is H2O H2O splits into hydrogen and oxygen and then this hydrogen is stored and then used to dissipate energy So this way hydrogen is not the source of energy but the carrier of energy. Now this begs the question electrolysis has been there since decades right then why are we talking about green hydrogen electrolysis now and not 15 years back well that is because although electrolysis was there the cost of production of energy through renewable energy was very very high. If you look at this graph you will know how much the renewable energy sector has actually changed in the past 10 years. If you remember I showed you this graph about 4 to 5 months back when I spoke about solar watts. In this graph you will see that from 2009 to 2019 well the cost of producing electricity from coal has decreased by just 2% from $111 to $109 per megawatt hour. The cost of nuclear has increased by 26% from $123 to $155. 
whereas the cost of onshore wind has dropped by 70% going from $135 to just $41 and the cost of solar has decreased by 89% going from $359 to just $40 per megawatt hour. So for the first time in human history, renewable energy source looks way cheaper than fossil fuels. And in the next 10 years, this cost is expected to drop further from $40 in solar to maybe even less than $5. This is the reason why suddenly electrolysis looks like a feasible process to carry out with renewable energy production. Now the question we hear is why do we need green hydrogen and what is the problem that hydrogen fuel will solve for the Indian economy? Well, if you look at the industry specific application for green hydrogen, it is almost super important for three major industries, steel, transportation and chemical industry. So let's start with the first industry, which is transportation. Here, let's take the first factor, which is range and volume occupancy. If you look at an EV with an advanced lithium ion battery, it could achieve 400 to 500 km range, but these batteries would take up 400 to 600 liters of space in your car, which is absolutely enormous. Whereas the fuel cell plus hydrogen storage tank would take up less than 50% of the space and in the next 5 years considering the advancement in hydrogen economy, hydrogen tanks plus storage would occupy only 100 litres and can give you a kilometre range of 480 to 500 kilometres. Which means 4 times less occupancy of space for the same range as lithium ion. Secondly, hydrogen fuel cells have an energy to weight ratio that is 10 times greater than lithium ion batteries. So in simple words, if you want to add more range to a vehicle, it is very easy to add to hydrogen cells. But in lithium ion batteries, they are so heavy that if you want to add range, you will need to increase the size of the battery, which means what will happen? The weight of the vehicle will increase, which will again need more power. So you will have to add more battery. So lithium ion batteries after a certain point will become counterproductive. Whereas with hydrogen, it's very, very simple. Then we have the third factor, which is charging time. If you look at EVs, Tesla Model S can give you a 400 km range with half an hour of charge and if it is a regular AC charger, it will take up to 4 hours. But when it comes to hydrogen fuel, even a Hyundai truck which has a payload of 34 ton and 400 km range gets recharged in just 8 freaking minutes. So if you see, when it comes to passenger vehicles, it might not make that much of a difference. But when it comes to commercial vehicles, these advantages are a massive game changer. Why? Because if you look at the modes of transportation on a graph wherein you plot weight versus mileage, you will see that EVs are suitable up to a weight of 10 tons and a range of 160 km per day. Whereas, as soon as you look at heavy utility vehicles like fleets and taxis, it becomes very difficult to use EV both due to limitation of range and charging time. Because you see, a taxi driver cannot stop and charge his vehicle for 4 hours or drive only 150 km a day, right? Whereas, when it comes to hydrogen cells, they are so productive that their applications extend all the way to buses with a range of 400 to 500 kilometers a day and a weight of 50 to 80 tons to trucks with 100 to 130 tons of weight and 800 to 1000 kilometer range to even trains up to 1000 tons and 1000 kilometer range and beyond. This is the reason why hydrogen fuel cell can revolutionize the transportation industry in the world and save hundreds of millions of tons of carbon emissions every single year. And then we have the shipping and the aviation industry which will need synthetic hydrogen based fuels which are a little far away from reality. This is the reason why hydrogen fuel cells are super important because they cater to heavy duty load that EVs cannot deliver for commercial or passenger transportation. And this brings me to perhaps the most important industry specific application to India, which is the application of hydrogen in steel industry. This is where India needs to be extremely concerned about something called carbon border tax. Carbon must have its price because nature cannot pay this price anymore. The idea of a carbon border tax is gaining ground in the United States and the European Union. A carbon border tax to level the playing field for European products if other countries do not go as far as us or refuse to go in the right direction. Western countries don't want to see companies packing up for places like China or India because of their less stringent environmental rules, which make the goods produced there cheaper. In simple words, the European Union is going to charge you an additional tax if your carbon emissions are beyond a certain level. Which means, if we do not decrease our carbon footprint, the cost of Indian products in the European Union will increase. Eventually, it will cost us billions of dollars in trade. 
In fact, BCG estimated that a levy of just $30 per metric ton of carbon emission tax could reduce the profit pool for producers by about 20%. This is assuming the crude oil prices remain at $30 to $40 per barrel. Now for India, we are the second largest producer of steel and we exported 20.63 million tons of steel in 2021 alone. And as much as steel is a superpower for India and global trade, it is also one of the most polluting sectors in the country, with steel industry alone contributing to 12% of India's total fossil fuel emissions. And the reason why this emission is so high is because the steel industries in India use grey hydrogen as fuel and reducing agents. What is grey hydrogen? Hydrogen that is produced from coal and methane using steam methane reforming. And considering the rise for demand of Indian steel, if we do not shift to green hydrogen, the carbon emissions from the steel industry of India is expected to shoot up from just 242 million tons to 837 million tons over the next three decades. And the fossil fuel emissions from steel industry alone will be more than 33% of the entire country's fossil fuel emissions. So practically, if we do not curb our carbon emissions, EU will impose carbon tax on us and someone else might beat us in steel export. This is the reason why there is a dire need to decarbonize the steel industry of India and to shift from grey and blue hydrogen to green hydrogen. For this, I'll attach a detailed report in the description that will actually help you understand the technicalities and the exact figures of when and how this decarbonization will be achieved. And this brings me to the third important industry that we have in India, which is the chemical industry. For this, again, I'll attach a document link in the description because this explanation is too technical unless you study too seriously for your IIT entrance or else it will just be information overload for you. But in short, if you want to understand this, the concept is very simple. Blue and grey hydrogen are supposed to be replaced by green hydrogen, which is expected to happen with the evolution of solar and wind energy. And this is merely because of the cost of green hydrogen. Similarly, hydrogen also has immense application in oil refinery, glass production, propellant fuels, semiconductors and a lot more. This is the reason why green hydrogen is super important not just for India but every single country on the planet. And whoever manages to crack the code of green hydrogen will go on to become a net exporter eventually that country will go on to command an extraordinary power in the global politics. Now the question is, considering the fact that green hydrogen is super important for the world, should you just directly go out there and invest in green hydrogen stocks? Well, not really. And this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that is, what are the factors that you need to consider as investors which will pose as hurdles for the adoption of green hydrogen so that you can make an informed decision about investing into green hydrogen related stocks. Before we move on, I want to thank our partners Deserve for supporting our content. People in India has one of the greatest wealth inequalities in the world. A major reason for this is the ownership of growth assets. Even among affluent Indians, the ownership to assets outside of real estate and fixed deposits is extremely limited. Our current investing strategies, which are built around managing and beating inflation, will not help us bridge this gap. Unless capital grows meaningfully, it will not help you live the life that you truly deserve. People tend to take investment advices from family, colleagues or the internet and end up making ad hoc investments. On social media, there are too many opinions on how to invest and where to invest. And most of this information might not even be right for you. And because of this, you end up making suboptimal choices yourself. And while listening to these random advices, people don't understand what information are they actually putting their money in. And even if that information is right, people don't understand if that information is correct for them, their portfolio or even their risk appetite. So there is really no one to run up to if things go wrong. As a result, your hard-earned money is at extreme risk. So with the demands of a full-time career and a successful job, is it really possible to grow your wealth yourself? Well, this is where Deserve comes in, wherein they have created a unique integrated portfolio approach to bring their member's investment portfolio personalized to your investment style and your risk appetite. The IPA is built by experts who have decades of experience over market cycles and is based on modern portfolio science. And it is dynamic, so if the markets change, your portfolio adopts to that change. And Deserve members also get exclusive opportunities such as pre-IPO deals, global investments and high yield debts which are very and analyzed by experts before they're actually brought to the market. And just like you have doctors to get medical help, teachers for learning, with Deserve, you get experts to invest for you. So if this sounds useful to you, 
go ahead use the link in the description and apply for access moving on to the hurdles of hydrogen adoption the first and foremost factor that you need to consider is the cost of green hydrogen which is extremely high in case of transportation the cost per kilometer of hydrogen fuel is at the moment close to 3 times more than lithium ion and since hydrogen has more application for commercial transportation like buses trains and trucks it is a little far away from reality as of now because it is not viable yet the most important word we hear is yet because with the increase in production research and government incentives combined it is expected to drastically bring down the cost of green hydrogen in the next 5 years so keep an eye on the cost and then make your decision about investments now as far as the steel industries are concerned just like in transportation green hydrogen right now costs 500 rupees per kg whereas grey hydrogen only costs 150 rupees per kg so according to multiple sources and research journals green steel is expected to become viable only till 2030 and that too is an optimistic estimate secondly just like lithium ion batteries use lithium and cobalt which are extracted at the cost of the environment hydrogen fuel cells need platinum and iridium which are again rare metals and will need a lot of digging and harming the environment so very soon there is a very good possibility that we will see alternative metals or alloys that will come as a breakthrough for green hydrogen applications so keep an eye on any kind of substitute for green hydrogen for platinum or iridium thirdly the storage of green hydrogen is a big big problem for which i'll attach a link in the description to help you understand it better and last and most importantly there is something called round trip efficiency of hydrogen which currently stands at just 40 to 50% which means if you get 100 joules of energy converted from power to hydrogen and then back to power you will get only 40 to 50 joules of energy with the rest of it being lost in the process so practically 50 to 60% of your energy is going to be lost in the process of going from power to hydrogen and then back to power so this area will need a lot of improvement and as an investor i am just hoping that the indian tycoons will manage to crack the code of green hydrogen because right now being an exporter of green hydrogen is a fast track into the big leagues of geopolitics That's all from my side for today guys if you learned something valuable please make sure to the like button or to make youtube baba happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>